Hi, and welcome to this video where I'll be talking about how to create a Swiss story maps based on data from Survey 123 or So, this is really a follow up on a previous video I made about how to create a map based survey using Survey 123. Um, there's a link to that video in the description and some box. I don't know, probably up there. Um, anyway, um, so this is very much about, you know, not so much all of the things, cool things in a story map, but more specifically those things that lend themselves to work together with um, survey one, two, three data. Um, I will be covering getting data out of survey one, two, three. Uh, adding charts or maybe not so much adding charts because that's a relatively limited thing that you might think was very obvious. Um, creating maps, creating map tours, creating filtered map uh, feature classes in order to make map tours on a subset of the data from the survey one, two, three data. And then finally, you know, basically just remember to um, share story maps. So um, let's dive into uh, how this is done in ArcGIS Online. So I have myself a, um, a course account here. So it's a, it's a user with um, some limited rights. And that's the first thing you have to consider, which access rights do you have to your survey? So in the video about creating these surveys, said that you have to remember to set shareable in different scale levels. So this one is made shareable to a group in our organization that this member or this person here is a member of. Um, so this person has can read data from the survey but not change the survey as such. Um, so let's take a look at that. So the first thing you do is that you go to the nine dots or the applications. And if you haven't uh, rearranged them, they will be in some order. In this case, survey one, two, three is at the bottom. I use it quite a lot. So I'll just move it up to the beginning. Uh, and I will probably also want story map. So those are the two apps that I'll be using in this video. In survey one, two, three, if I click that, it will bring me to my survey one, two, three, where I can see all surveys. If I go and say services I own, you see there's no survey I own, but surveys I can view results from, we have this one. So I can go in and see the results of this survey. If I go to analysis, it will generate a little report for me about the survey. And it makes a nice graph here and dumps all the images and creates some nice quick analysis of it. You can go in and take questions out and filter and things like that. Um, I'll just print this out as a PDF. Um, Uh, so I have that as uh, my PDF for later. I can go into data. And this will give me some you know, basic. Uh, so these are, I just added six points um, using my middle name there, my first name here. Um, and for each point, you can see person, my name, where it was, the image, how many parts I gave that location, and it'll script. So that's this tool here again here. I can filter on time, things like that. I can also export data. You see, there are two ways of getting data out of survey one, two, three. You can export it. Um, so you could export it to Excel, make nice graphs in Excel, 
stop them back into story map. That will work fine. Um, CSV, same thing. Um, you can export as shape files or file geodatabases. If you want images, it's a file geodatabase. You should also note that, that these will make a snapshot. So if I say export, I'll have a file. Someone puts changes in my survey, that won't change my survey or my file. Okay, so that snap sucks. That's very good. In some ways that you say, okay, this was the state of the survey at this moment. So sometimes I would download a file to a database and then upload that to ArcGIS Online to work with it there because then I had a snapshot of what the survey looked at at that given point and could make a story map based on that. If you want to make a um, story map without having to take the data out of Survey one to three and put the bag into ArcGIS Online. What you can do is that you can open it in a map view. This is one of these places that are a wee bit bumpy because this is the old map view. So there they have Esri has not updated to the new map view, and um, that's a wee bit annoying. Um, so what I, the only thing I want to use this for is to get the data into ArcGIS Online. So if I click the three dots, so this is my server one, two, three dots, click the three dots, say save as, and say campus capability. Survey. Um, tag this as um, demo. I even think I have a category for this demo. Uh, da -da. Um, that's just so I know I can easily delete them. And um, I could create a folder to save it in. Um, this will just create, save it in um, the username. So just make sure that those names are unique so you can find your data. And then I'll create the item. So what's happening now is that it is creating a data element on my ArcGIS Online. So when I'll close this, Finish with this and go back to my ArcGIS Online. Uh, refresh. We see that we have a feature layer here. So now I have a feature layer that is linked to my survey data. If my survey data gets updated, this feature layer gets, also gets updated. So this is a live link to data set for better or worse, depending on you. Sometimes it's nice to do that. Sometimes you want to have it as a static. If you want, want it as a static, the only way was to go and do the export in Survey 1, 2, 3. Yeah. So I have now got data out of Survey 1, 2, 3. I also covered that if you want to make charts, you can export to Excel, create your chart there, or you can download that report. So that's basically the possibilities you've got um, at the moment. You can make a chart in the map here, but how to get that into story map, I don't know. Um, so this one, my survey data, I can start working with over here in ArcGIS Online. So I can open in Map Viewer. Now it's the new one, um, it's, it is nicer than the old one. Um, and I can start creating some maps. So the idea of story map, of course, is that we want a lot of different maps um, as part of our story. So let's think of some obvious maps we have. So in this case, we have a survey where people have given places 
at between zero and five. Um, so one thing would be to symbolize these points. So this one, if I click on it, this was five hearts and there was a picture on it. So, um, I remember this one was only one. Um, so, change the symbology of my points. So the way of doing that, make sure that this one is selected. Note that, that in SV terminology, this is the dark menu, this is the light one. So in the light one, so once it's chosen, go in the light one, we can go to this button called style. And we can make different styles. Um, so let's start with just giving it different colors according to how many hearts the data set is going to have. To do that, you go up here, choose an attribute, hit that plus. Say I want to give them symbology according to how likable this place is. So that will be my symbology. Um, you can see it's a bit strange. It says five, one, two, three. Um, why it chooses that ordering um, a bit strange. So in here, I will probably want to uh, rearrange. So drag five down. So one, two, three, four, five. You can always click on one of these, change the color, change its style. If you want to create a flow of colors, you can go up to this where it says, Simple styles, click that, click the pencil, choose one of these more gradiated colors. Let's say this one here. Done. So, red is likable, blue is not so likable. Um, Um, maybe I should make them a bit larger. Okay, something like that. Okay, I'm uh, happy with my map. I could go in and say, uh, not so. So I could add a bit of a comment to the scale here. Just by clicking at edit here and saying very nice. Um, okay, so just you know, it, how many hearts was it? You know, this was in the description I put in the survey. So, on that, made this nice map, and I can then save it. So, same. Note here there's a little blue dot indicating that this is not saved. There's unsaved changes, so click this, save as. Um, maybe, no, no, let's do that. Okay, so this is, um, scaled. Likeability map. Okay, um, save this. I will, you know, you can hear that I'm hesitating a moment because I might as well just be a bit organized. So if I go back to my content, because I'm going to make a lot of maps, and instead of having them all floating around here, in my root folder, I will make a new folder. So I clicked up here and say, sorry, map. Survey and Lisbon. Uh, and so now I have that folder. 
And because I started out without really thinking what I was doing, I'll just take those two and move them to my folder there. there. Good. So I can now continue my making maps. So again, there I can click on my feature layer and open it in the map viewer. So same as I did before. And again, zoom in. Um, so we had one where we had all the, each class had its own. Let's make a map where we have only those that had um, high values, so four or five. So I want to filter my data set. So that's like before making sure that this layer is selected. I go and oh, wasn't chosen like that. So like that has its blue line. Click the filter. This one. Add an expression. And I want to filter on how many hearts. So I'll go and say how likable is it? That. Here we have a bit of a peculiarity. It's a, it's how is we does this. It, I have a is that means I can have one value, and I could add an expression. That's fine enough if I have, it's it's relatively simple. There's a trick that is to go and choose includes, and then say select values, and then I can say includes four and five. That's an easier way of having multiple values um, so you can see they are those that are colored now um, those that are not filtered are the gray ones as soon as i say save they disappear okay so now i have a map where i have those with a high value um, in this case yeah it's okay what I really want to do is I want to make a hotspot map. So I'll go up to my style and choose this heat map. Um, at the moment, there's only three dots. If there were dots, it would be more interesting. But why I can do some tricks here. I can go in and I can uh, Increase my air into uh, just about. I can't do this. Uh, maybe let's go together. Uh, that was just too much. Hmm. That is I can go. Um, so something like this. Uh, not really good because I have so few points, but you get the idea that we can increase the area of influence and we can decrease how much or increase how much it deteriorates as a function of distance. So this one will make the I made them smaller. Let's see if that's good. So here I could make small ones with a high density. So, and this one, this, as I increase this one, I will, the influence they will get more and more blurry as you move up from the point. As I increase this one, I Increase the air of influence. Uh, and in that case, I have to decrease the blurriness for you to be able to see anything there. And I might be able to pop the colors up a bit like that. So it's a bit of fiddling around, combining your area of interest in your heat map with your deterioration, also your 
this they call it soft edges okay i'm fine with this one so i made a new map and i guess i can go and click hit on oh, my save and i can call this heat map and this time because i have made my folder i can now save it down on my folder demo um it. Okay, so now I had a one with just the point or the points with different uh, um, scales on it. I had all the nice places. I might as well also just make a map of all the nasty places. So if I change this one, I can go in here and say, okay, not includes at the moment. If I say, no excludes i get the places okay so now i'm just swapping it so those are not that are not four or five they are excluded that so this was my head before this is excluded i could of course say include and select values and then get rid of those two and include the low values Um, okay, so they are all located around here. So maybe I need to change my symbology around here. The style to this one. So they are basically much closer to each other, as you can see here. The nasty places or the less interesting places are down there. Okay, so this is a heat map just saying approximately where that. If I also want the original points, what I could do is I could say done. And I could go over here. Let me say done again. And right click on this. So I click on the three dots and then duplicate this layer. And what this time I want them symbolized as just dots. Now you can see the individual dots. So now I have both my heat map and the two points that are in the heat map shown on the same. Okay. So again, there's that one chain. This time, better because I just worked on the map from before. So you can see it's my heat map thing there. So I'll just do save as to make this one. So we'll call it heat map. Uh, not so nice. Save it, same thing. So if you just reuse your maps and then save it, do the save as, reuse it. You can quickly create quite a lot of interesting maps using simple symbology and filtering. Uh, of course, we could also fit on other things than the hearts. So um, we could go up and uh, let's just uh, get rid of this one. Um, and we've got one layer. Change it to points. Uh, done. And then go to my filter and say, okay, I want them to be uh I remember that's a free there. Okay. So now I've got values one, two and three. Okay, done. Now I can add a new expression and say okay, which one of these low values, one, two and three, were created by Esben. So I could go and say that my Please enter your name is Isbun. And you can now see there's only one point where the value is one, two, or three, and where the user that entered the data was Isbun. So I could add like this. So this one 
to now only have that one point where Esmond gave a low value. All of the other points that Esmond gave were high value. So we can combine these filters um, with an AND. I could also say, okay, instead of having this AND, um, we could use all ways of uh, adding expressions. So we do that by going up to where it says match all expressions and say match at least one expression. So in that case, it's going to be a point that has a value of one, two, or three, or as it says now, is created by Esben. So if I just get rid of, uh, how can we see? Uh, I just get rid of that one. I'll get rid of that. that. So um, that didn't change because that three was created by husband. But if I delete one, that, and save, and then, oops, oh, sorry, no, I've still got. Um, so. Creator is I've got this thing wrong now. Change this one to please enter your name is Lisbon. This so now hopefully you can see that that point two that was made by William, and these points one two and three were created by Lisbon. So I can combine one or more criteria using an or, which means that. As they say up here, file must match the following expression. Um, so um, this is R Esben, so that's those three, or the value of one. Um, if I changed it, uh, save, go in here. This one match at least one to match all. Then Esben has not put any of the value of one in it. So in case of an and, two in it. So Esben has only put it three, four and five as far as I remember. So if this one, if both criteria have to be matched, then this one, has to at least include a four. That five probably. So here we can see that those that have the value of four and five by Esben, they are those two points. You can combine as you want. What I just want to do is I want to get rid of one of these expressions. So I just want to get rid of the top one. So let's say I want all of the points entered by Esben. And this time, I won't save it as a map. What I want to do now is I want to go up on the three dots. And as I did right at the beginning, I would say save as. And then I'll create a feature layer again called. Lisbon's points. Uh, go same folder, save. So now hopefully I have what I need to create a story map. So just to go back and recap what I have in my content. Uh, I don't want that story map for anything. So just leave it page, don't need to save it. I only wanted the feature class here, the feature layer. So I have Esben's point, which is not a map, which is just a feature layer of the three points where I used my name Esben to register in it. So I've got two feature layers. They are data. You can use data or feature layers for doing map tours in 
star map, and you can use these for doing maps. So now let's go and create a story map. So we'll go up to the nine dots, click the nine dots, click story map. Create a new story. Um, from scratch. Okay. Campers. Ah, uh, no, I'm sorry. Survey. Okay. Um, now we can start adding elements. Um, next, so found it. All of these different elements. As as I said, lots of videos about creating nice story maps. Let's go down and show a map. So here we can see the three maps that are made. So I'll start with this. So I can zoom in. I can also, if I want, I can um, change elements of it. So I want to have a legend on it. Uh, yeah, I probably want to keep the legend open. Like this. So that's a nice map for me to use. Um, anything else I can do? Want to do? I can turn the left. That doesn't really make sense. So, um, let's say that. So now I've got this map. I could also make a um, swipe map. So um, swipe here. Yeah. So here I want to have a web map of my uh, heat map of nice places. You give me another name, but never mind. So that was there. And over here, I will add my heat map of not so nice places. Yeah, fine. So now we can do a swipe between nice place map and not so nice place map. Um, nice place map, not so nice place. We should probably add a text. Uh, um, Right, left for not so not right, not so nice places. Uh, yeah. Um, so now I've made a quick um, swipe map. The last thing I wanted to show, which it, you know lends itself to these um, survey data, is to add a map tour. A map tour, they don't use maps, they use feature classes. So I'll start from a feature service, feature layers are made, and I can do a map tour of all the points, or I can do one of only Espen's points in them. I wonder what happened. Oh, it's slow.
So now I have this map tour of only the points I registered where my username was Lisbon. Um, I can change my um, tour so I can say, hey, data. So I don't want this one, I just want my comments. All right. Um, On the media, I can how many in the upper point, I can fill them or crop them. Ever I can filter. So I could filter by um how likable. So it will start with um goes to the lowest. Change it so now it starts with the high. Most likable and then the least likable. Um, I can also choose a layout. So I could say, oh, this one. So I could have the explore one, or I have, could have a guided one where I want to have the images in focus. Uh, so in this case, my story map would have start with a nice place, and as I go along, it will go to less and less places. Okay. Things like give less and less places. So that was those basic components um, that lend themselves to story maps. All the other ones are basic. Um, you can add and watch not in our videos about using survey one two three these were also oh, part story map but these were those that were specific for adding data and using it story map together with survey one two three tell story about the data as described or the place as described in the survey so once you're finished and happy you can go do a preview um yes um so we can just see how it looks, or we can go and see how it would look on a mobile phone, mobile device. So we, we can look at our map product in different device types. Um, if you're happy, close it there and publish. And once you go say publish, you should consider, of course, make, make it, it says here, story description, and here, private, or save it as organization. This user is a course user, and course users are not allowed to save to public. You have to have a personal named user. That's something that the administrator of the ArcGIS organization, so for this university, it's me. That decides on who can do that. I do, I do not let course choosers share out publicly. But students can have the private. So like that. Uh, and publish. So now anyone in the organization can see. Oh yeah, if there are any um, additional, so there might be some things that are not made shareable. And I didn't. I didn't put shareability on my different layers here. So, yes, it will uh, automatically uh, share those items that I forgot to put sharing on. But I didn't put sharing on the maps I created. So in order to be able to share the, map, the story map, those elements that are in the story map also need to be shared. That was what this last thing did for us. So now I have a story map, and anyone in the organization with that link can go and watch the story map. So, hopefully, I covered how to get data out of Survey123, um, how to add charts or manifest, or not to, because the only tool that was those are to create. 
report the cop, make a screenshot of that, or you could create your um, charts in Excel, and then you can add them in Story Map as images. Um, creating maps, so we had maps with different symbology. So symbology for one, two, three, four, and five parts. We also made heat maps. So we had density of points for highest. They are most interesting if you combine that over a filter. So you filter in, so you only see all the high values, all the four or five heart points, and then make a heat map of where they are. Compare that with a heat map of where all the low ones are. So different maps that we can work with. Uh, we can use them as single maps or as swipe maps in the story map. So if you wanted to make map tours, it's a bit different. There's a bit one of those that would be a bit complex. So a map tour does not use a map to generate the map tour. It uses the feature layer. So the trick was there's about creating a filter and then saving that as a feature. I think um, I better just recap on that. So if we uh, jump over into, back into uh, ITS Online, just to show how we created this feature um, layer, like I had this one Esbens before. So if you start out with the feature layer containing all of survey points, we open that in a map viewer. And make sure that it's selected. We don't need to zoom in or anything because what we've got to do is go to the filter, add a filter, and say in this case that please enter your name. So this one is not this one. Let's do it for William. Uh, add to the filter, not, not an extra one, no, it's another one. Uh, delete. Like that, save. So if I now zoom in on that, you should see that there's only those points uh, here. So Edmund's points for here, William's points for there. So this is a map. In order to make the map tour, we need to save these three dots as a feature layer. And we do that by, so these are the feature layer we are showing here, layers. If I click on the dots here and say save as, and then, then call this Williams points. I no, now have uh, save. So if I go to my content, don't need to do anything with the map, I'll just leave it, I'll crash out of it. I'll just go to content and say, yeah, yeah, leave page, I don't care. Because it's not the map I need, it's the fact that I now have a feature layer called Williams Point that I can use when I create my story map, oh, sorry, my map tour. So, Map tours use filtered feature classes, as I just showed, so that you can guide around. And you can have any map you want, so you can change the background map to something else, whatever you want to do. Finally, when you're done doing your story map, remember to share it, otherwise it's not that fun. And the nice thing about this is that when you share it, um, even though you have not shared the feature classes and the maps you created and used in the story map, RGS Online will automatically share these for you. So I hope you like this video. Hope to see you in another video. Bye.